there's two things you should do today. You should vote and you should register for spring classes, especially for the mobile classes, the mobile web development and mobile programming. Um, doesn't take much of a crystal ball to see the importance of mobile as, as time marches on. Um, I, I got, I, I, by the way, I got to share this with you. Um, I got a, a, a voicemail message that was from a telemarketer and they were trying to pitch me on some work at home sort of, you know, work at home on the internet. And, and they made it seem like it was just this guy calling me, you know, like not a company. It's like, hey, I found your information online and I want to call you and share this opportunity about how you can make so much money on the internet and I've been doing it and blah, blah, blah. Because we all know the internet is the future. And I was thinking, yeah, the internet was the future in like maybe, what, 1996, 1994, you know? Um, because I, I, I almost I almost caught myself and say that, that mobile development is the future, but that's the present, all right? And it, it certainly will become, continue to be important in the future. All right, at any rate, let's talk about what we're going to do today. And as you know, I, um, one thing I stress in just about all my classes is a notion of design, and again, not not just from a graphic perspective of what it's going to look like, but from the perspective of thinking through and planning what you're going to do before you do it. All right? So what we're going to do today is we're going to look at what we want to accomplish. Then we're going to take inventory. And we're going to take inventory of what we know and what we don't know. That's sort of an important thing to do when you're working through a project. Another of my recurring themes is to do things incrementally, not try to do everything all at once. So the nice thing is, is if you're given a task, and you may not know how to do everything for that task, but you know, you're likely to know how to do some things. So you start off with what you know, and then you try to figure out the stuff that you don't know. And for the stuff that you don't know, it's good to have a plan on, on how you're going to go about doing that. And, what you need to do, really have a good understanding of what you need to do. Then if you have to look something up, you're, you're focused. You're not like, well, gee, um, I know, you know, I know I need to go to Google to look this up, but I have no clue what I'm looking up, all right? If you have an idea of what you want to accomplish, then that, that sort of narrows it down a bit. At any rate, this is what we're going to do. And I'm going to sketch it out first. And then we'll discuss the different pieces of it and identify what we know and what we don't know. If I'm not mistaken, we had a page that allowed the user to select a department and then it would show a list of employees in that department. All right? Now, here's that, that's, what, that's the example that we finished off uh, of last time. Here's what we want to do. Here's what we want to be able to do. We want to link here. So maybe the name is a link instead of just plain text. So everyone's name is a link. When you click on that link, you get the details of just that one person. In other words, the person whose name you clicked on. So there might be three people in the department. You pick one of them, click on their link, it brings up all the information about that person. Now this is like a real common sort of model that you'll see, you know, on web pages. Go to Amazon, do a search for some topic, you know. Do a search for Star Wars. You get a billion products associated with Star Wars. You click one, you see all the details about one of them. So we can have a listing that you can filter or search through that brings a list of items, some of the information about all, each of the items, 
Then there's a link to click to and get the full story about it. All right, so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to do one more piece, and then we might even do one piece beyond that. If not today, then on Thursday. And the one piece beyond that is we are going to show a picture of the person there. All right, so we're not just going to show text about the person, we're going to show a photograph of, of the person. All right, so that's our goal. All right, that's our goal, and that's what we want. All right, let's think this through. We should know how to do this, because we've already done this. All right, we might have to review it, but again, we've already done that part. We have to know how to create a link in our grid view. Because here's our grid view. Our grid view, in the examples that we went over last week, was simply text, a table of text. So we don't know how to put links on the grid view yet. All right? So we're going to have to figure out how to make a link. And that link's going to go to this page. So we have to make a new page. And this page is going to have to only pull up the one person we selected. So. Do we know how to pull up just one person? Do we know the SQL statement to pull up just one person? We should have a pretty good idea of that. All right? We've already done the SQL statement with the parameter, right? In this case, the parameter was department. So if we do something similar on that page, we can pull up just the one person that, that we want. We don't know, though, how to put a photograph on the page. So, We'll have to figure out how to do that. Now, one thing that's important in web development is always remembering something from page to page. All right? That big topic is called state, maintaining state. And we talked about it a little bit uh, in the first part of the class. And we, we said that one nice thing is that the .NET controls maintain their state. All right? Another way to say that is they remember their attributes from if a page submits back to itself. But this is a different scenario. We're not submitting this back to itself. In this case, where we were picking a department, we were picking a department and reloading this page. So it remembered the department we picked. All right? So .NET did that for us. Now we're going to have to know or remember what person we clicked on and got to this details page. Now, how do you suppose this page is going to tell this page which person that we want? Go ahead. URL. Through the URL. All right. So, are we going to have a different page for every person? Of course not. That's ridiculous. Does Amazon have a different page for every product? No. That would be ridiculous. They have a script. So let's say this page is called detail.aspx. So if I click on Mike, it, it calls detail ASPX, but it brings up Mike's information. If I click the second one, it, it brings up Joe, and it brings up Joe's information. In both cases, I'm calling detail.aspx. All right? How is that second page, detail.aspx, going to know which specific person that we want? What does it need to know in order to do that, to pull up the one person that we want? What do we ever need to know in a database to pull up one specific row from a database? Their ID. Like the Their ID. The more specifically, the primary key. Primary. All right? So if we want to make sure we pull up one person and only one person, we're going to give this second page somehow the primary key of that person. All right? Now, how are we going to pass that primary key? Well, we could, a couple ways to do it. Probably the most straightforward way, and the way we're going to do in this example, is we're going to pass it via the query string. In other words, 
This link is going to be slightly different for each person. All right? The link is always going to be for detail ASPX. The link is always going to have the letters EMPID after it, but the part from the question mark after, actually the part from the equal sign after, is going to be different for each person because for each person we're going to attach that person's employee ID to the query string. Now you might remember this from CISS 216, the query string. The query string is how we can pass form data from one page to another. All right? Really how we can pass any data, but in this case we're specifically, well I guess in this case we're not using form data, but we are still passing that employee ID from this page to that page. So, when we form this link, that link isn't going to be hard-coded. That link needs to be different for each person. And it needs to be different by including the employee ID as part of it. Then this page, when it pulls up the one person, is going to use this query string argument as a parameter in the select statement. All right? In this case, if you recall, we use the value as a of the dropdown as a parameter to this statement. We add something like select from employee where department ID equals question mark. And that question mark we filled in at runtime based on what department was selected in the dropdown. Now we're going to have something sim similar to this where we're going to say select star from employee, but our criteria is going to be different. We're going to say where employee ID equals question mark, and we're not getting that from the control, we're getting it from the query string. Okay? So, let's think of the, the steps that we have to do to make this part work. Alright? Just this part, and then, then we'll talk a little bit about the image. We have to be able to put a link on this page. Alright? We, we, we need to be able to put a link in the grid view on this page. All right. We need that link to be slightly different for each person. We're linking to the same page, but we're also passing the ID of the person along with it. So this link has to be a little bit dynamic. It has to be based on values from the database. All right. This page then needs to be able to pull that value off the query string put it in a SQL statements parameter, and retrieve the one employee whose ID matches that. All right? Now, since we know we're only getting one employee by definition, right, because we're passing the primary key, can't be two employees, one, two, three, four, right? We don't really need a grid of data, right? A grid of data is where there could be multiple people, right? Multiple people in the department. We want a grid. We want a listing. We want a different kind of view here. We don't want a view that shows multiple people. We only need a view that shows one person. So we're going to use a different kind of view there. It's going to work real similar to a grid view, except it's not going to show multiple people. It will show one person. Okay. So that in a nutshell is what we need to do for part one of this. Part two, pulling up the people pulling up the, the photograph of the people. What do you suppose we need to do to do that? Are there any changes we need to make to the database? Maybe you don't remember what was in the database. I know I don't remember exactly what was in the database, but what needs to be in the database for this to work? We have yes. a column with the file name of the photo. Yeah, the name of the image. All right, that's important to remember. We're not putting in some kind of binary large object, which has a clever name of blob, we're not putting in the actual image in the database. We're simply putting the name of the image. Why? Well, think of the HTML you need to generate. 
the HTML we need to generate is going to be an image tag with the source equal to something. All right? And that value gets pulled from the database. So we need a column in the database that contains the name of the image that we want to display. All right? And then we need to figure out how to put an image on a details view. Once it's in the database and we figure out that, putting an image on the page is, is a piece of cake. All right. So let's go through, let's start and do part one first. And in part one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a link here. And that link is going to go and call a page called detail.aspx. And it's going to contain uh, the ID of the employee. So that'll be our start. We'll come back and do the image afterwards. That's already off. Someone attributed that maybe to the fact that we, we were seeing the sun today. I don't know. I, I try not to worry about it when I'm in a good mood, right? You know, for one reason, if I were to determine, yeah, I am in a good mood because of the sun, then when it inevit inevitably clouds over later on today, it's liable to go in the dumper. So I'm not going to think about why. All right. So let's go back and very briefly revisit this guy the department search. All right. We have on the department search a drop down that is populated from the department table. So we have a data source for the departments that gets bound to that drop down. We then have a data source for the employees that uses the value of that drop-down in the SQL statement as a parameter. Remember, wherever there's sort of a blank, a parameter in our SQL statement, it's represented by a question mark. So in this case, what we're saying is our SQL statement is this, Select star from employee where department ID equals question mark. Where do we get that question mark? Well, we get it from the drop down. All right. And then we have our grid view that's bound to that. So, in a nutshell, it looks like this. shows the person that belongs to that department. Now, it's really sort of meaningless to show employee ID. I guess we can show it, all right? Um, you'd have to decide would it benefit the users to show the employee ID or not, all right? What we're going to do is we're going to eliminate the employee ID. We're going to eliminate it from the grid view because really the assumption is in this case we don't the user really doesn't need to see the employee ID. But we're still going to keep it in the data source. Why? Because we need that ID. Why do we need the ID? Well, we have to pass it to that second page. All right. So, let's go back in here and create a link. Now, I'll go in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Edit Columns. I'm going to get rid of employee ID. This is from the grid view, mind you. We're not getting rid of it from the data source because we need it sort of behind the scenes. I'm also going to get rid of employee name because that's right now a text uh, field, and I'm going to want to make it a link. 
So I'm going to get rid of it, and then I'm going to recreate the employee name as a link field. So I'm going to go and delete that. I'm then going to select that I want to add a hyperlink field. All right. And I can go and I can put it on the top back where the name belongs. And I can put even in for the header text name and so on. Now, here's the two things that are critical. And, and I'll do it in here because I need to, but I'm going to open up Notepad and paste what I did there um, in, uh, uh, in Notepad so you can get a better look at it. Data navigate URL fields is our first choice. All right. Actually, I'll just put the second thing in Notepad. The first one's pretty straightforward. But the first one is data navigate URL fields. That is the name of the field that we want to pass as part of a query string. All right. It's the fields, the data fields, that we want to include as part of the URL. So what do we want to pass from this page to the second page? Well, we need to identify that employee. So we need to use our employee ID number. So I'll click the little three dots. And I can go in here and I can type the name of the field I want. And that's employee ID. Now we're allowed to pass more than one field to the second page. We only need to pass the one, right? Because all we need to be able to do is identify the employee. And the primary key does that for us, right? If, however, there was a multiple part key to this table, you know, maybe a person's primary key was their employee number plus their department. So maybe there were two employee ones, one in accounting and one in IT, all right? Then we could pass both pieces of the primary key. All right? But again, having a single part key really simplifies things because there's only one thing we have to pass. All right? So I'm going to pick employee ID and I'm just going to click OK. Now, what we have is the data navigate URL format string. This serves two purposes. It allows us to define what web page that we want to go to, and it allow, allows us to define where we want to put and how we want to represent that information, those data fields, in the URL. So, let's adjourn to Notepad for a minute. If we think about it, if the employee number is 1, we want the URL to be this. information for employee number one. If the employee ID is one, two, three, four, then we want it to be like this. And so on. So, those are some specific cases of the result that we want. That's not what we're going to put in here, because we don't always want to call up employee one. We don't always want to call up employee one, two, three, four. We want to call employee with the ID matching, well, whatever their employee ID actually is. So therefore, we're going to put this in here. If you notice, if you look at this, and if you can imagine, this part is the same for every person, right? Detail.aspx, question mark, amp ID equals, boom. All right? What is different is the exact value of that. Where are we getting that value from? We're getting it from the employee ID. Therefore, what we're going to put in here is this, detail.aspx, question mark, emp equals 
curly bracket, zero, curly bracket. All right, let's analyze what that means. All right, the curly brackets or braces indicate that this is a parameter. All right, sort of a different kind of parameter. That's why we don't have a question mark. All right, in URLs, question marks are fair game. Right, so we can't use a question mark for a parameter, otherwise we'll confuse things. So, curly bracket, zero curly bracket indicates we're going to pop in there a parameter. That actually should be amp ID. All right. Now, what does that zero represent? Well, over here in our list of URL fields, we define a series of fields. You probably all realize now that in most things in programming, when you start counting, you don't start counting with one, you start counting with zero. So, in other words, while well, a layperson would say this is item number one on this list, and then the next one is number two and number three, a programmer would say that employee ID is field zero on this list. Then if there was anything after it, it would be field one, and then the next one would be field two, and so on. So, this curly bracket zero curly bracket indicates I want to put in the zeroth element of my data navigate URL fields list. Now, in our case, that's all we're passing, right? Because that's all we need to pass is the primary key to the person. So, in a nutshell, and you'll notice this is going to be a recurring theme in, in everything we do. Part of what we have is, is static. It doesn't change. In other words, the detail.aspx question mark amp ID equals is the same every time. What's going to be different is the value of that employee ID. And that's going to be something that's a blank that we're going to fill in when we run this, this guy. All right. What are we filling it in with? Well, again, there's a slightly different syntax here. We use the braces, zero braces, to indicate that we're going to fill it with the first item on that list. Item number zero, which is the person's employee ID. So let's go and put this in here. and see what that gets us. All right. So now, if I go and run this, oh, I missed one thing, by the way. I missed the data text field. And that's simply what we want the text of the link to be, right? What it is we want to click on. And in our case, we want to click on the employee name. So, I need to put in the name of the name, which I think was EMP name. Let me go and look in the database and make sure that that's the case. And for good measure, I'm going to add a second person in one of the departments so we can look at two people. All right, the field is called emp name. That's good. Let's go in and add. Well, let's just put Mike in finance. in each and we have one department that has two people in it. All right. So let's go and run this. And when we run this, we'll see 
that, and we pull up that first 